Thank you very much for this part of the talk. Um, I just want to start with a remark. I come from Poland. I teach philosophy in Poland. And in, um, two years ago, gender was the most popular word. Uh, on the political level, uh, your work was the most cited among politicians and other people yes. who had never read yes. you and so on. Um, so, <laughs> so there is a story now in Poland that there are a men and women and gender. I mean, gender is something we don't know. What's that? Because oh. gender is an English word, so many people don't understand what's no, that. No, it's like McDonald's. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it's used now in everyday speech, like <coughs> to point at someone you are not sure who he is. So he's probably gender, right? He's probably gender. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way people talk now in the street. But it just beginning to the question I have. I really like the story about the subject for mating uh, of yours, and I think it's very <coughs> compatible with the recent uh, areas of research in the cognitive studies, like uh, embodied uh, cognition or so on, on inactive uh, philosophy of uh, mind or uh, on knowledge. But I mean, I have always this doubt thinking about it. How can we put it into action? I mean, because I have this intuition that this story about irritation, about performative way of thinking about subject is a good way to non or less violent society. Mm -hmm. But then in the pra on the practical level, you can see that people want to be sure, are you a man or a woman? Mm -hmm. They want psychologically be to be sure that I'm like uniform or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So how can we put this really nice philosophical stuff? to like practice, to mm -hmm. do something, to make people not hurt anyone because of not knowing who you are, mm -hmm. or not to beat someone because he's probably a gay or gender or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have always this doubt, how can we, it's also Foucaultian, I suppose, how much power can be less effective in this way. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had these doubts, how this theory can be put into work? <laughs> well, for, for me, I've seen it put into a fair amount of practice. So I'm in a lucky, I'm in a lucky position. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I'll just say this, that, um, I mean, first of all, gender studies and queer theory and LGBT studies and uh, masculinity studies, I mean, all of these fields have certainly a place in the academy and it's a very rich and highly contested area um, with its own trends and its niches and its schools and, you know. You know, and, you know, all of that. Um, but at the same time, it's entered into law, and it's entered into social policy, and it's entered into the American Psychiatric Association, and it's entered into the World Health Organization, and even the, diagno the diagnostic manuals, mm -hmm. the DSM, that actually is generally understood to be the, the, um, the, the standard uh, um, diagnostic manual for mental health um, throughout, throughout the world. Um, it entered into UN debates on um, sexual autonomy. Um, so I, have, I am confronted all the time with the ways in which it enters into public debates and opens up certain areas. Now, um, in my view, um, there is a critique of violence in the theory of gender performativity, and it. Um, and I will be talking about nonviolence later today, but I can't do everything at once. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and it has to do with the not only the constraints that gender norms have on many people who feel that life is not livable within those constraints, but also the demand to expand gender and to allow it. Um, to include um, uh, a, a number of embodied ways of living um, um, such that those who live that way are free to breathe and move and exist and have their relationships and celebrate their loves and mourn their losses <laughs> openly, or you know, as, as openly as we do such things. Um, and, and so I think it's entered into the gay marriage debates, and it's also entered into um, uh, uh, gay parenting or non-traditional parenting law. Uh, so 
in fact, there's no question. I mean, you, you started your remarks by saying gender has become very popular, it's debated. So you're telling me already that it's in the political field. It is, but it is not doing any, I mean, it is not functioning in the way to, I mean, to reduce the violence. It's the opposite. I understand. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying about no, I understand that. But it seems to me that it opens up the question, like, why are people, um, beaten, impris imprisoned, and put into psychiatric uh, um, confinement mm -hmm. on the basis of their gender presentation, or their sexual orientation, or what is perceived mm -hmm. as such, or their transgender existence in, pu in public sphere. Now, in Turkey, I, I went there five years ago, and we could barely meet as a group because the transgender people were so unsafe on the streets, and now, there's new legislation that, that in, and, and the transgender people were part of the Geze Park and received new forms of solidarity from quarters of public life that were completely unthinkable. Now, Poland, I'm coming in, uh, uh, in June to go to a conference on gay, parent, lesbian, gay and lesbian parenting where, indeed, we're going to write a platform and you're going to hear about it. Uh, in order to challenge the illegality uh, and the medical um, obs the obstructions, um, sorry, the obstructions imposed by the medical institutions and by the legal institutions. So there's a group that's forming, and I have agreed to come, and we're all, and other people who work in gender theory have agreed to come. We're not going to impose the American way of life on Poland, I promise, <laughs> but we're, all, we're going to work with. But we were going to work with, um, with people there who are part of a struggle, how to get this out in the media, how to appeal to international law, how to appeal to, to the, the new, the new depathologizing provisions in the DSM. So we're on our way. We're on our way. And I've seen those changes. I've seen huge changes in Spain, the gender identity law in Argentina. Unbelievable. I don't know if you've had a look at that. That would not have been possible 10 years ago. And it's not me, it's a movement, right? It's like a whole lot of people. And, and even in France, although I am demonstrated against because I'm against nature. Okay, I mean, I'm contre, contre la nature. And, you know, so they are unbelievable. Um, but the same, interestingly enough, the same Catholic institutions that invite me to speak have to deal with demonstrations from their own community against my speaking. Now, it's not me, right, that's so important here, but it's interesting to track, like, the divisions within the Catholic Church itself and the broader Catholic community, and one can actually look at some of the dominant periodicals and see that those debates are actively happening. Yeah, so, I just see you, like, more optimist, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, that is my job. <laughs> <laughs> that's my job. I'm, and I'll convince you, you see? 